下一位讲者 s w i m m e n 他是来自于马来西亚，然后他负责的一个 project 叫 Senior Project。Senior Project 它有点类似像台湾的 G 零 V， 也是由一群愤怒的工程师所发起的，然后想要把呃呃马来西亚的一些公开资讯变得更亲民、更可用性。那他今天主要跟我们介绍的是 Senior Project 怎么帮助做一些调查报道，呃，譬如说给一些背景资讯好了。如果大家知道呃马来西亚之前有经历过一场大选，那前任总统他会下台一个很重要。原因是因为他可能背后有一个，也许呃跟一个贪污计划，或说一个金钱计划有关。然后今天 s w i m m e n 他们的 Senior Project 就是跟那个贪污计划去解密，这个背后的一些工具跟系统都是由 Senior Project 这边来来负起的。而且更特别的是 ，Senior Project 它不止在马来西亚，目前刚才跟他聊。他们的 backend 目前也被缅甸的公民社群也移用到缅甸去，所以缅甸也用同样的系统去追踪他们的政治人物。呃，好 ，Swimman 准备好，那还是再提醒大家，如果大家有任何问题，可以欢迎上 Slido。然后这一场的代码是 g o v z e r o s u m m i t 然后 Dash Data。那我不多说，把麦克风交给 Swimman， 谢谢。All right， 呃、uh...。I'm a bit s o n in Chinese， 我是可以讲中文的，但是我的技术啊技术文具啊不太熟悉，所以啊之后我们就啊用英文开始做 presentation， 然后再做 Q&A。All right， so we a、uh, the presentation will be mostly in English。So the first question is， anybody didn't have their coffee yet？ Okay， good。I'm sorry if you fall asleep， but this will be a long day。It'll be a long day。So my name is Sui Ming. I'm also a nobody, just so you know. So yes, what is corruption? Well, corruption is abuse and trust power for private gain. What the hell does that mean? I'm sorry, I'm going to just do that a lot. Uh, imagine a politician actually take money from you, buy a yacht for a few billion dollars. Actually happens back home, but just so you know. Uh, but Essentially, it is what like this, and it's actually present, uh, defined by Transparency International. So yes, what does it mean by this? Uh, in certain countries, uh, often in many countries with open data are available, is many believe that data will be something you can just pluck from tree or right from your data portal. Uh, things should be just made available and get things to work. The short answer is not always for various reasons. Especially true before the election for Malaysia. So what happened is, uh, we simply don't get enough information out from data portal. Uh, the government don't like it. Uh, people in power do not like it, and they will make a lot of things to make it hard for you, right? Uh, but in even in some country with a more mature situation, what really happened is it can be due to bureaucratic situation. It may be due to Uh, civil service do not understand the use case and whatnot. So what happened instead is uh, it still it still might not be easy for you to get information you need for your new site. Uh, here's why: by the time you do your freedom information request, it'll be a few months. Then for country that don't have open data law, there'll be another parliamentary cycle. It's still too long, so it is still very hard for you to actually get uh, data. So, what's the hack? The short answer is we're going to use open data standards. So, okay, here's some cool picture, right? We, I'm going to just let this finish this slide. Whoop. So, uh, here's what we're working on for the last few years. Uh, we actually work on the assumption that we will not get information completely. Uh, information will not be served on a plate. We will get some information from this document, some information from another, and sometimes, if you're lucky, it might be a nice data format. If unlucky, then we'll be in, it'll be in our reports and whatnot. So the assumption here, we will not ever get full information. So, but with data standard, here's what we know: we know how to plug the information. So in practice. It'll be something like, let me put it. Okay, so a good example would be your Twitter. So you might actually get a quote from a Twitter account. Twitter have their own standard of data, or map with coordinates and whatnot. So what you do is, uh, we combine the data. The traditional way for software development, uh, we used to call these mashups, but 
in our situation, it's actually before mashup exists. Uh, mashup tends to talk about end result. Here, we're actually talking about combining the data for us to actually build our app before uh, combine the data before we even start building our app. But once we have the missing data, we roughly have an idea what we what we need and what we don't need. So this is a picture of a prime minister, just so you know. Then you can rearrange it. But here's something in practice. Uh, you would look at a certain court cases, right? Uh, corruption, then you will not get the full picture fully. So what instead is, it will find out. Yesterday has a very cool example. Uh, we had, uh, yesterday we talked about pollution on the river. So the turns out that the Ministry of Environment in Taiwan actually set the sensor in the beginning of the river, at the end of the river, and in the middle, right? So how that, but you know there's a pollution case there, who is responsible? So that's the mystery. So you got a, you got a situation, but you do not get a full picture. So what you do is you look at companies, you get company information, you get sensor data, then you might play around with sensors and whatnot. The point here is, then here's the thing, you fit all those information into a data format that you can use. So that you can plug it together to form image like this. By the way, if you guys conf uh, confuse, uh, uh, you may ask question. So, calling one, calling twice, stop. All right. Okay, so here's our favorite tool. Actually, it's not a favorite tool. Okay, it's our favorite tool simply because we build it, but ignore us. Our purple is actually a data standard. It's a, I would love to call this as, it's a, it's a, it's a data format for people and organization, and more importantly, the relationship between the people and the organization. So uh, I might not have the time. I will show you later if you've got the time. In short, this, uh, this data, this is actually a way to, for J, to use in JSON mostly to actually uh, describe a company or a person. So here's the thing. Who is this person? So that's what, we, uh, that's what a popular backend are here to do. What does it do? Who is this person? What is this organization? Who is in it? That's a start. Uh, then with this, so this is what I say, a popular backend is essentially a database, a central database of people and organization. Uh, I will show you how the database looks like later. It's a little abstract. Uh, but here's the thing that we add. Uh, original popular data standard do not actually have sources field. They have links. Uh, what it uses is it actually have things uh, generate data field. But what have, uh, to be useful for journalism, you need to know the source, where the information comes from. Uh, if you're if you're not don't believe us, you just don't believe us. But as much as possible, we make it easy for you to trace our step on where do we get the information. Do we get from company registrar? Do we get from website and whatnot? Of course, when we do research, we also have our own rules. Uh, we, do not, we never ever take information from blogs. We never ever take information from tabloids, but only from main site, government site. Yes, government might not be trustable, but unfortunately, they're official. So we have to bring them in. So we have a, uh, this is what we mean by a source field. And more importantly, uh, what we implement is, let's say a, a person would have at least a name, a name, birth date, then we have positions. Each of those will have multiple fields. So a name, and we will have like we can add like five different fields for the name, or let's say this person is in the board of director of certain company, we will link like five different websites or twenty different websites if we can, a link to this and prove that this person is in this website. Just so, 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 but why on earth we need a API database service? The short answer is we with the API service we can do whatever we want. You want to make pretty pictures? Use the JSON. You want to make a website? Use the JSON. And in practice, in practice, it's more something like this. I know a lot of you people here are actually journalists and not software developers. Then what you do instead is instead of shopping for data, you're shopping for tools instead. You take whatever tool they have, mix it into your workflow, see whether it works for you. Uh, that's a big idea. And with uh, this in raw data format, it also allows you to be flexible. Uh, tools doesn't fit you, build, uh, ask help to build one. The data is, is being described. So that's a big idea of doing it in 
uh, API format or raw data format, I would like to call it. So information is hard to get. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, in Malaysia, remember that I tell you that the, uh, the top of the power is actually very corrupt. That will make it very hard for you to get information. But how do you buy bus that? The short answer is you collaborate, ask for help. Uh, how we do this in practice is different nonprofit groups actually collect their own information for issues. Uh, we, ask for, uh, we ask them whether they have some spreadsheet or whatnot. They might not have, but they might have. Uh, ask first. Always get help. And mm, this comes later, but you might, uh, other source, uh, before I continue to this, uh, other source of help can be your friendly politician, your friendly MP, uh, library, and whatnot. So another thing about a popolo it describes is actually describe the idea of a post. A post is essentially board of director. It can be, more importantly, it can be your members of parliament, your minister of whatever department, your prime minister, president, etc. A post. And those things always change. Uh, here's what we discovered. Often a politician... Uh, we don't really usually charge a politician. As a result, some of our politicians are board of directors of companies. And those companies make transactions involved in the big political scandal. We will not know it until we keep track of those. And we cannot keep search our way out using Google. So as a result, uh, we store this. Post is actually one of those things that we actually store in Popolo. Uh, so, and because it had a time and date field, Sorry, uh, it had a time of date field. We always uh, we can actually store it very effectively. Uh, why this is useful? Let's say you have corruption case from Ministry of something between 2014 and 2017. You had a you had a corruption in two, a scandal for search ministry in 2018. This person is not involved, even though he might be the former minister. So something to think about. Post and date time is very important, and this is why the data is important. Now, uh, person, what do we store in person in puppet? Uh, what we, the keyword for this is what we call politically exposed person. Uh, we mostly store politicians, uh, public officials, that's your civil servant. Uh, but we do not store low level. We actually are uh, higher rankings, uh, higher ranking until we know for sure that this person is in uh, corruption cases. But we are, uh, to save time, we mostly focus on the big cases, not the smaller case. Uh, we added a feature that we didn't use yet. Uh, we add family members. And one feature that we add that is not in original Popolo is a family relationship, uh, which is, again, uh, for practical reason. How do, you hide, how do a politician hide the fact that they own a company? They put a company under their children's name or their wife's name, which actually happens all the time. So what happened is we add a relationship feature to say that this is a parent of and this is a father of. And also we had associate. Associate is relatively easy. Associate means that usually means in a board of director or colleague. So this is actually what we have, uh, what we actually store for person alone. Name, alternative name, uh, Jolo uh, or Liu Tezuo. You got three, two different names are being listed on the on the interpolate list, right? So we have name, that's the main name. Uh, then, yeah, alternative name. Then we have identifiers. Okay, identifiers will come uh, very important after this. I'll go to that. Then, yeah, of course, address, but date, of course, mark shot. Mark shot is the photo. So I go back, identify, introduce either about identifiers. Uh, one good identifier is your passport numbers. Those numbers are unique and take to one person. Uh, do you guys have uh, identification? identification card those are your that number is you that's your identification a person tend to have two to three a business person will have another one for the ownership of a company under the company registration so identify is very important and remember remember in the early photo where we actually combined the data just now how do we know that a person is uh, the data is something that we can join up together one of the key things we use, we actually use identifiers. So if this person is with this identification number matched with the other one, it's the same person. If it's not, then I'll be very worried, then I should quit my job. <laughs> but that's what we use. 
So here's what we use for organizations. So uh, organizations, essentially, we use it for cabinet, that's your ministers and whatnot. Agencies, uh, ministry, that we code ministries and various agencies. Companies, uh, companies uh, originally when do, they do purple law, uh, we, uh, they only consider political organization and government agencies. Uh, turns out that uh, purple law works very well for companies. And that is very important because in a country that you do not check conflict of, conflict of interest, uh, storing the company and the position of a person inside the company is very useful. Uh, originally, people, uh, people from other countries thought it's a crazy idea. Uh, it's a use case that's only similar to Malaysia. But turns out that Donald Trump owns a company, still owns a company. So I think who had the last laugh now? But a committee is also another form of organization. So this is what we store in uh, organization. So in this case, it can be political party, what time is established and whatnot. Identifiers, again, same thing. Each organization have their own numbers. Company registry is one. Then, of course, addresses and what kind of organization. That's a type. Political party, uh, agencies, whatnot. Uh, we store it as free. Uh, we store it as free text, so you can put whatever you need, but try to make it consistent. So now we have a concept of called post. A post is your position. Uh, your CEO, your board of director, your secretary, minister, and whatnot. So this is what we use it to store. So, and remember I tell you just now about the start and end date. Uh, it's very important. Back to the corruption case. Not all minister will be convicted in a, in a corruption case, especially if the case happens after the search minister do not handle the post anymore. So, end date is very important. Uh, but where do we find the data? It's my, favorite, it's my favorite question. Everybody keep asking, where do we get the data? The way we get the data is an old technique called research. We read documents one page at a time on a piece of paper. Okay, it's a book. So, so unfortunately, when data is not available, report is the best friend. And when a, when a country do not have a government digitization program running properly, then you have to read it, you have to write it, then you have to put it on a spreadsheet or, or put on a spreadsheet first, then sync it with our database or we use our, some of our editor that we're still building right now. And this is actually a, a document, a paper document that we scan from our parliament. So you see, there is person uh, what's the parliamentary seat? Pandan is an area. So each parliamentary seat represents an area. Then what organization there is. Then within it, within this is a question to a ministry. Ministry is your uh, agriculture and whatnot. In this case, they ask uh, who is with whatever organization of that. So unfortunately, this is not something that you can do automatically yet. Uh, you have to use your eyes, you have to read, you have to understand. That's why you use a journalism hat. And this is why I get I'm not a journalist. Sorry. Uh, another source of information is you can actually look at website. So in this case, you have to do the same thing because websites sometimes are badly formatted. But if you're lucky, you can actually scrape it. But otherwise, same process. Finding the right entity, uh, put it in your editor and whatnot. I wish one day that we ha would have machine learning technique to actually extract it automatically, but for now, you have to do the hard work. Again, this is from company documents. Company document will be something like your prospectus. Uh, you would have your uh, filing. So every time you go on stock, you have to file your some information. A company registry would have search information. So, but those are for some country, you do not get digital form. Malaysia, we still might get some, 
but I know some countries that do not actually release in digital format. Again, same process. But if you can get it in the spreadsheet format, then you can import it. You have to write some special tools for it. And you see a company. So a lot, a, a lot of people are coming here and thought that open data is the way to go. But even in the environment you don't have data, you can actually get very rich information. You just have to type it manually. So for example, remember I keep, uh, keep talking about the date. So it's actually recorded here. So it's actually, as I say, uh, the information is very rich. It's just not in a very structured format. So again, this is from website. Uh, again, uh, different website, different thing. In this case, this is uh, the organization chart. Now you can actually build. Uh, Popolo had the concept of post, then the post report to another post. Oh, sorry. So you can actually build a chain of responsibility. So after this, then you put it in a data format, then you make it easy for you to work with it. And you actually have to do. Other place is you can look at your notice board. This is all for construction website again. Then sometimes you have to watch whether the website is updated. Something to look at. Okay, I'm going to go very fast right now, so I'm going to move. So why we need structured data? It's something I tell you just now. You can build tools, and more importantly, you can use tools. So this is actually using a Python script to actually query your data. This actually allows you to uh, write specialized script. Uh, you can also use this script to actually fetch data from other source, map it together to form a new data source for you to find new information. And as a result, you can look at information like this, right? So, and you can build website, more website, and da 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 da. Okay, so put in another map. And if you have got any question, you can talk to me later. Thanks. Thank you, Swimman. The that sharing, maybe because of time constraints. Then, if you have any questions about how to collect or collect information, you can talk to me later.